Hey, this is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanisms in Brian Boru, a trick-taking area control game from Pierre Sylvester. I don't own the game, but I did play it just the other day and took these photos of it, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think Pierre Sylvester does some really interesting things with area control games. Um, his other game that I'm aware of is uh, The King is Dead. I played the second edition of that and really, really enjoyed it. Brian Boru does a couple really interesting things. The core concept of the game is that you draft some cards over three rounds, um, at least in a three-player game, that, that was the case. You draft some cards, and then one by one, if it's if you're the active player, you will choose a location on this map, and you will say, let's compete over that location. And you will play a single trick-taking hand in which each player will play one card and the highest number wins. And when you do, you gain control of that territory. So that in itself, I think, is a really cool concept. Trick-taking as you're competing over locations. And there's a lot of strategy even in which locations you choose because each of these locations is located within a region and you're trying to either gain control of that region or be connected to it for other abilities. So there's a lot of great decision points in terms of which location you choose. And sometimes you might choose the location not wanting to win it. You want another player to win it or spend a good card on that location. The twist, though, that I really like, and this is my favorite mechanism in the game, and I think it could be carried over into other trick-taking games, is... The card that you play, and you can kind of see it, let's see here in this photo, the card that you play has an ability that triggers if you win the trick or win, we'll call it tricks. So it's essentially you're competing over this location. We'll call it a trick. So this, uh, this benefit you gain if you win the trick and this is the card that you played. However, if this is the card you played and you lose the trick, you get to choose between the bottom benefits on that card. And I've stacked some other cards. There are red, blue, and yellow cards here. I've stacked some cards here to show you that each of these cards offers different types of benefits. They are themed a little differently, like yellow cards offers you um, these, these courtship letters. Uh, red offers you some, some defense against uh, Vikings. And then blue is a church-related. Um, but I love this mechanism. I love that the card you play gives you a win-win benefit, even if you, whether or not you actually win or lose the trick. Win the trick, you get this benefit. Lose the trick, you get this benefit. And this adds a lot of interesting decision points in terms of which card you play. Because at any given time, you, in fact, oftentimes, you may not want to win the trick. You may not be interested in that location. And uh, you might have a stronger benefit on the bottom of a card than on the top of the card. Uh, so yeah, I, I really, really like this idea that no matter what happens on a trick, you are getting something. And that really keeps players engaged in the interesting decision points throughout the game. Every turn, there's very little downtime because every turn you are playing a card and getting something out of it, either win or lose. That's definitely my favorite mechanism. The other little thing, let's see. Oh, no, two, two other little things to mention. One, for each of the area control regions, there is not only a victory point uh benefit if you control that region, but also there is a threshold you must reach before you can say that you actually have control of that region. So uh, let's say, I think this there's a big region down here that I was trying to control where I think I got seven points if I controlled it, but that seven point trigger, seven point threshold didn't trigger until there were at least uh, five locations controlled in that region. So I really like that. So just by like putting one token in a region doesn't mean that you have control of it. You and other players need to have a bunch of tokens in that region. And that actually adds to the whole thing about um, win or, winning or losing a trick can still help you because you might have, like say in that region, I might have four tokens in that region um, which would grant me, uh, which doesn't quite grant, grant me the, the threshold to get the victory points. And so I might start a, a trick, start a battle or over a location in that region and lose it just so another opponent's, so just so an opponent's token can end up there reaching the threshold for all players. And then I get the victory points. Really great, uh, method. I think of, of area control there. And last, um, there are a couple different tracks that you're advancing on in the game. There's the courtship track. There's the uh, there are tokens that you're gaining from the uh, from the the Viking invasion track, and there's the church, which is also essentially a track, but you're gaining tokens from it. Um, and for each of these, there's, the game does a really cool thing in that every round a winner is declared for one of those tracks. Whoever has the highest uh, value for that track, and that person loses their status on that track. They drop down to zero, or they lose all their tokens. But the other players pretty much stay the same. Maybe they drop down one, but they pretty much stay the same. 
I really like this form of competition over tracks because it means you can really go for it and benefit from it, get a big bonus from winning that round on that track or that category. But if you didn't get it, you don't lose all that progress. You keep that progress. And all of a sudden, because that top player has moved down to the bottom, you might have jumped in the lead by default. That I think is a really clever way of doing essentially another form of area control over those tracks. So many clever mechanisms in this game. I am really, really uh, pleased with how it played out, and I look forward to playing it again. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you played by Brian Boru, or if you have, if you can think of any other games that use mechanisms like these, especially the trick taking. Can you think of another trick taking game where you can gain something from the card you play even if you lose the trick? I think that's really clever, and I'm sure there's another game that does it, but I'm not aware of it. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks.